Welcome to Beef Island. Sitting just offshore New Island settlement, Beef Island covers just over 10 hectares and is currently owned by Falklands Conservation. The island contains a wide amount of native tussock grass as well as the imported Yorkshire fog grass. As part of the peat and wetlands project, a small team travelled to the uninhabited island on the vessel the Saoirse to investigate the habitats within the peat and their carbon capture content, although the island proved very difficult to reach. When we got onto it, it was actually very steep and it was quite a battle to get through all the tussock there. We were kind of climbing up a steep hill and also, yeah, didn't really know where we were going, just knew we kind of had to get to the top somehow. And it took a while to wade through it all, but eventually we suddenly came to this big clearing and there was just this bit, it must have been grazed, I guess, in the past, but it was completely open. Um, and then it seemed like the whole other side of the island was, was open like that and it had all these amazing views from the top. The summit reaches a height of just 52 metres and evidence of grazing was present. Wildlife was rather sparse with a small rock shag colony located at the bottom of the island. David Higgins is the peat and wetlands officer and it's his job to survey the island. So we've found on these flanks as we move up the hill here that we're getting really dense tussock grass and it is pretty much only tussock grass all the way up here. We've done some soil samples, soil depth is, isn't too bad and that we're probably getting up to half a metre to three quarters of a metre soil depth. Then we moved up onto the top of the island where it's, it's getting a lot more erosion, the soil's thinner, it was probably only 10 centimetres in places and lots and lots of bare patches with erosion going down on the far flanks. Clear signs of grazing, clear signs of some non-native species coming in, such as Yorkshire fogs and, and a few other species. As well as grazing from potential beef cattle, evidence of a fire was prominent due to the red ash to the north of the island. Yeah, th there was a couple of places where it, it looked like there'd probably been a fire and whether that was caused by, by people trying to burn off the old vegetation to get new shoots coming through or it was from a lightning strike, we don't know, but the, the surface had certainly gone quite crumbly and it was eroding away. And there was also a bit of a cap in places which looked like it had gone hydrophobic, so instead of absorbing water, it would be repelling water and that would be increasing your surface runoff. Once near the summit, battling through huge quantities of tussock grass, the first task was to monitor the soil depth using the pedrometer. So on the tip of this penetrometer, we've got basically what looks like a harpoon. It's pointed and that's to ease you getting into the soil basically. It's spring loaded and that which gives you an idea of the pressure that you're hitting under there. So if I push it in here, you can see there's absolutely no resistance there at all. And you can see on the gauge it's moving up when I hit basically bedrock. So in this soil there isn't a compacted layer at all, it's only getting to move up on the gauge here. And there's lots of reasons why you might have a compacted layer. If you've got heavy stock grazing, your stock poaching and trampling can, can compact it. If you've got tractors and machinery running up and down, you'll get a compacted layer as well. Or it might be just that you've got a shallow peat soil and then you've got a clear pan underneath. Whilst the depth can be studied, the next method is to take the soil samples to access the carbon storage, which will be done in the laboratory at a later date. To take the sample, the soil auger is used. So really this, this soil auger is for taking a sample and checking things like your, your nutrients, your phosphates and things like that. And I've already hit bedrock there. So you can pull it out and it came to about here and then you can work out what your soil depth is. If I take this out now, you can see as you go down into the peat, it definitely gets wetter. So this top layer that we've been looking at is quite dry. It's dusty, probably because there's been a burn here. But as you get further in, you, you see you're starting to hit the water table and there's certainly more soil moisture in there. For both methods, multiple sites are used to generate an overall picture of the soil depth and carbon capture of the island, which are chosen at random. With the weather turning unfavourable, it was time to leave the island, and just in the nick of time, as the low tide revealed a challenge. We made our way back down through the through the tussock and we realised when we got to the bottom that the tide had gone out quite significantly and suddenly there was a huge forest of kelp, like really thick kelp and it was, uh, we had a real struggle getting back onto the boat actually because the dinghy came out and it got completely entangled in all this kelp stuff and we were there sort of 
trying to push out and push off with the oars and trying to chop the kelp and all that kind of stuff and it took a long time to, to get out but we did it eventually but yeah I probably won't go back there anytime soon at low tide. With the soil samples taken and the depth studied, we next go to the stunning Saddle Island to be greeted by dolphins and sea lions as we investigate the island's invertebrates and potential erosion of the peat soil.